Hi, and welcome to another episode of Our Road to Camelot. Very special episode, actually. Yeah, we're going to talk about what we've done this summer and mostly the campgrounds that we have checked into, which are Coast to Coast or Good Neighbor. And RPI, yeah. And so RPI we'll get into this right after this. So this episode mainly is going to be a coast-to-coast -coast and RPI review. Uh, as mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about this. We did a lot of campground reviews of the individual campgrounds, so you can check those out as well. But we want to do a final recap. Is it worth it? Um, Good we'll question. And we'll talk about that at the end. So, yeah. so basically, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, in this video, I'm going to cover all 49 states that are on the mainland here. There's none in Hawaii. So, uh, so yeah, we're covering all the Besides, states because like, there's nothing in Hawaii. Don't know how you get your RV to Hawaii. Yeah, it'd be kind of, be kind of fun to try. <laughs> um, and uh, Coast to Coast actually has affiliate campgrounds as well. They got the what they call Coast to Coast. And then they've got their, in there, they have three tiers, premium, deluxe, and classic. Mm -hmm. And then they have something called good neighbor parks. So it pads out the numbers to make it look really good. I'm going to have all of the states. I went through every single state and posted how many of each are in each state. And we're going to talk about what that means here just in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, we will talk a little bit about RPI because that's the other one, Resort Parks International. The thing with RPI is a lot of the coast-to-coast -coast campgrounds are also in the RPI network. So it looks like you're getting, hey, you're getting all these coast-to-coast -coast, and you're getting all these RPI in reality, you're getting all these campgrounds that are kind of affiliated in both and a few stragglers that are not. So it's not quite as big as it appears when they do give you the sales pitch. Keep that in mind. Okay. Um, what else did I put down here? Um, in all of those states, the 49 states, there are actually 13 states that don't even have a true coast to coast in the three tiers. None of them. They don't have any coast to coast. There's 10 of those states that don't have any good neighbor parks. And out of all those that I just mentioned, there's five that don't have good neighbor and coast to coast period. So you're not going to see this in every single state around the country. And here's the thing. On some of the coast to coast, we found out when we went to make our reservations for the coast to coast, they are no longer a coast to coast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, there was one in Illinois that that happened. We, right. we booked in Illinois. We we're going to stop for the night. They got back to me saying, Hey, we're no longer a park. We bought into a home park that was in Delta, Utah. Ours was a weird situation. That's true. It was. We were actually at a different place altogether when we bought into coast to coast. <laughs> Not and, even a coast to coast park, actually. Yeah. They were just. They're representing Coast to Coast. They're selling Coast to Coast memberships, yeah. and they sold the membership to Antelope Valley RV Park in Delta, Utah. Within the first year, or less than a year, yeah, we got information see. that, oh, we're no longer... And so they have the option to buy a park and then opt out of being Coast to Coast. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of these parks that are on this list... I didn't call every single park. There's a lot of parks that may not even exist that are on this list. So you'll need to check that out mm -hmm. as well. So kind of unfortunate. Well, let's get to the parks. Okay, yeah. These are the parks that we visited personally this year. Uh, from there, the next park we visited was an RPI. That was a true RPI, St. George KOA in Utah. And we only paid 10 bucks a night in it was Utah. Great. Yeah. At a KOA. So that's it's actually a, pretty awesome. It's a nice little park. It's um, not yeah. far from shopping and pretty we, much we stayed there before before we had rpi and mm -hmm. it was like 50 bucks a night yeah uh the second one was actually an additional savings park uh which was circleville rb park we started out not <laughs> just not liking it because we the additional savings basically we got the same discount we would have gotten from good sam mm -hmm. it was basically the good sam discount uh, but the people were so awesome and so nice. I we just fell in love totally, with the park. Now, mind you, the park is literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's in Utah and Circleville. Circleville, yeah. Um, the town is like maybe this big. It's they do block. have a grocery store and a restaurant, which was fun. A restaurant? But the people The restaurant there, wasn't open, was it? No. Uh, no, I don't know that no, it, was, it was. But it was great. And the people were wonderful. Yeah. So, But it wasn't really any savings that we can... 
No. Say we got a savings. Uh, then the rest of it, that was the only RPI parks we stayed at was right there at the beginning of our trip. Mm -hmm. uh, we then were in Colorado Heights. It's just north of Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. And that was a premier resort. They did charge the nominal fee for 50 amp service. Yes. Take a look I think at it was our like review. Maybe six or seven dollars a well, night. Yeah, look at our review like just that. so we're not misquoted. Yeah, yeah. A, we did a review of that campground. It was kind of difficult to maneuver through because the roads were so narrow. It's a large park. Uh very and, large part, yeah. And it is rustic. But that was the Colorado Heights, not bad. Uh Spring Lake R V resort in Halstead, Kansas. In fact, I did both the Kansas reviews back to back. We were also in Lynn Lakes, Kansas. First one was a classic, the other one was a deluxe. They were nice resorts, though the second one. Lynn Lakes wasn't kept up. The campground wasn't kept up as well. No. It's this huge, huge community with these big lakes. Yeah. And it's mainly designed to cater to the people who own condos and houses and things. There's, in the it, I mean, it's really neat. You've got a lot of houses around it, around the lake and everything. They say you can go fishing in the lakes, but they've got the houses that are sitting on the lakes, and that's Technically private property. Yeah. That so. we only found a couple places that we could go and actually fish Access, if we wanted yeah. to. Now, here's the downside out of both campgrounds. If you go there because you want to stay and then do excursions, you are at least 50 miles away from Minimum. anything you want to see. So we did it. Shopping, we did like a couple I think, was 35 or 40 miles. 40 miles, yeah. Yeah. We did a couple of excursions over a 100 mile round trip, and at the cost of diesel now and then, that was that was pretty pricey. It was very so expensive. it made it difficult. We wanted to visit some really good friends, and it made it really difficult to try to visit them mm -hmm. when we, when it was a hundred mile round trip just to go see them. That brings us to Missouri, Tivoli Hills, Clarksville. It's funny. Back to back, we had one. It's not the worst, but one of the worst experiences along with one of the best experiences, mm -hmm. or probably the best experience. Tivoli Hills, near a little town called Clarksville. I think that last train had come and gone decades ago. There's parts of it that look kind of nice, until you got closer and took a closer look. There are condos. Now, I did get a comment from somebody that the the condos were not part of Tivoli Hills, though it's kind of all there. It's all there. And they're, yeah. it's all kind of run down and kind of a ghost town up there where the, the condos were. And it was, I mean, at least that was right clean next it. to the clubhouse. That wasn't open. That wasn't open. And then they had a laundry that claimed Wi-Fi that didn't work boat ramp with boat rentals that I didn't see any way how to rent them. Now, maybe we could have gone to the main gate because everything seemed to run out of the main gate because they no mm -hmm. longer had anybody working the office. So when you drove through the main gate, they also charged a resort fee. It was That <laughs> was a big one. That was like $18 Yeah, a they night? charged a resort fee, and I'm still trying to figure out, is that... For what? Well, the swimming pool was the only decent resort amenity that we really had access to. It brings us to Owensville, Missouri, Lost Valley Lakes Resort. Gorgeous resort. I really, really like Lost uh, Valley. It was a beautiful resort. We, um, we were in like a, a westerly upper loop, which was very well maintained. They um, had some other loops that we looked at. They had some that, we that were at, pretty rough. That were pretty rough and definitely more into the wood and rugged yeah. type look, which was fine. They still seemed well maintained. Yeah. So, right. so check out the, our review on this yeah, one. Yeah, it was great. Really great one, resort. Our, one of our favorite resorts. Um, but, Owensville was a nice little town, but the mm -hmm. good thing was driving down to Herman. We loved Herman. Herman's a great Herman's, little German yeah. town. A great veterinary there. Thank you very much. Yeah, still, still didn't get my Herman Munster. <laughs> He's not going to live that one down. No. Uh, then we went to Cuddy Des Moines Campground in Des Moines, Iowa. Mm -hmm. We were there for the Iowa State Fair. It was actually very convenient for the State yes, Fair. Yes, it was. It was really uh, great. It was uh, and a very, very clean, super nice people that ran it. There was, yes, uh, very There was nice. a very nice lake. You could fish. Um, Hidden Valley well, a Resort. More. Oh my gosh. Hidden Valley Resort was the worst one we had seen. That was our last review out of Tejeras, New Mexico. I, oh You know gosh. what? Watch that review. I, I don't yeah, even want, that's, I'm not even going to get into that I don't one. want to think about that one. There was a resort fee for this place, which blew me away. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. Check so it check, out. check that one out. Uh, not They had a resort fee for something that should not have been a resort fee no. for. It was horrible. It was horrible. We had been to Coast to Coast 
parts in the past. We first started traveling, go all the way back to 2019, the summer of 2019. When we bought our RV in Michigan. And when we bought our RV, they gave us this pamphlet that said, hey, try check out these campgrounds for free. We thought, free? That's awesome. We just, okay. we just bought all this stuff. We're we getting on the road for the first time. Free is good. So we went in only to find out that we had to sit through a coast-to-coast -coast and a outdoor adventure presentation. <laughs> and we did... We all know about those, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they wanted mega bucks for their, for their membership. Because each... To get into coast-to-coast, -coast, you have to buy a membership in a resort. Mm -hmm. Depending on the resort is how much you pay in. And they can set their own prices. And I don't remember the prices per se, and I'm not going to say Shop if I around. Did, but it was in the thousands. Tens of thousands. We Grand stayed Haven at three of them. Grand Haven was gorgeous. Grand Haven was nice. Oh. It was the one in Davison. Uh, yes, Lakeshore Resort was pretty it's spectacular. huge. They were all nice resorts. They're very nice resorts up in Michigan. Now, the yeah. problem was, is we happened to hit it at a time when they were renovating and doing upgrades to all of them. Good news is, they were doing upgrades. Mm -hmm. Bad news is, we hit it at the wrong time, mm -hmm. so we didn't have the best of experiences. So if you go back and see those videos, you're going to see us complaining a lot. But I, in, in retrospect, I realized, you know what? We'll probably see them again this coming summer if mm -hmm. our plans go in the right direction. We'd be staying there for free if we go back because we are premier yeah. members. We did stay at a good neighbor park when we were in Cocoa Beach, Florida, year before last, Joy RV Park. The discount we got at Joy RV Park then through Good Sam is about the same as what you would get through Coast to Coast. Mm -hmm. Now, the mind you, park. there's over 2,000 in the Good Sam network. There's 379 parks in the Coast to Coast network. That's including the good neighbor parks. Mm -hmm. So 2,000 versus under 400. And we're also talking uh, with Good Sam, you, uh, you're you only paying $29 a year, period. Mm -hmm. Now, with Coast to Coast and RPI, uh, we'll start breaking that down here in a minute, too. That actually breaks down to you pay that initial buy-in, and then you pay a yearly maintenance fee. Mm -hmm. And that changes from park to park. Getting in where we got in, our yearly maintenance fee is going to be $199, basically 200 bucks a year. Some of them charge up to $300 a year or more. We okay. talked to some people, they're paying upwards to $500 right. a year. So it may not be a lot, but it depends on how much you travel. You know, are you weekend warriors? Do you go for a week or two or a month out of the year? Right. How does it work for you? So let's, That's what you need to figure out. So let's go ahead and move on. If you look at the comments below... I have a section that says, the map looks huge. And then I have a breakdown of all the different parks in every state on mm -hmm. how many are in each state. Understand that. I also talk about Good Sam there as well. Whenever you go into the Coast to Coast website and you click on one of the parks, take a look at the notation, the RV notations carefully. It will tell you what fees are due. Uh, be very cautious if it says additional fees or a discount is applied. That basically means we're not giving you anything for free. You're, mm -hmm. you're pretty much going to pay almost full price. Uh, some of these are exclusively private. Yes. And others are open to the public. And they just happen to have Coast to Coast as being a member of, but their park itself is open to the public. So mm -hmm. understand that as, as well. Looking at the notations, I had an example. Pull up Gettysburg Battlefield Resort. When I pulled up the Gettysburg Battlefield Resort, because we love Gettysburg. I we, loved it. Dan. We did not stay at one of these parks there, but they do have one. There's no sewer hookups. So it is, mm -hmm. uh, you have water and electric in some spaces, but you have no way of hooking up to a sewer. They do have a dump station, which is free. Yeah. But there is a, and they char a charge $18 for, for a, honey, a wagon. honey wagon if you want that to. Yeah. So to if come. you want to be there for any length of time and you need to hook up to sewer, mm -hmm. then this is not the park you're probably going to want to go to. So I have all the states there. A few of them as an example. Like Delaware doesn't have either Good Neighbor or Coast to Coast. Um, there's a few others like that. We have uh, Maryland. Uh, now, New Jersey. New Jersey. Now, mind you, well, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty. Did not realize the camera shut off. 
Nope. So that's why we're doing this weird interruption and we're <laughs> going to finish the video. And I'm dressed differently. Yeah, so am I. So <laughs> anyways, so basically what I was getting at, we finished talking about, in fact, I, I highlighted them here so I can see them better. We talked about some of the areas where there are no Coast to Coast or Good Neighbor Parks. Right. Five of them, Delaware, uh, Maryland, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and West Virginia. So mm -hmm. if you're in those areas, this may not be something you want to look at. Um, mm -hmm. However, this is what I was starting to say when I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> if you live on the West Coast or in the mm -hmm. Upper Midwest, mm -hmm. West Coast or Upper Midwest, like I have... Arizona, there's eight coast-to-coast, -coast, 31 good neighbors. California has 12 coast-to-coast, -coast, seven. Um, and Washington has 18 coast-to-coast -coast with 25 good neighbor. If you live in that area, it might be worth it. And in the upper Midwest, you got Michigan and Minnesota, 10 in Michigan, eight in Minnesota, only two good neighbors out of the two of them. But still, you got... Uh, excuse me, 16 out of those two states. And in Ohio, another neighbor up there has seven coast to coast. Right. So if you live in those areas, it might be worth it. So mm -hmm. you got to kind of decide for yourself, is this something that's going to work out for me? Now, there are a lot of great, uh, we talked about a lot of great parks that they do have. So mm -hmm. not all of them are bad. So the last thing we were talking about here is location. And the location being... A lot of these are in the middle of nowhere. We mentioned that in the Kansas ones. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are like that. They're just really far away from where you might want to be. Right. So you got to think of this more as a destination location. So, uh, yeah, that's, you know, and like I said, it's convenient. What's convenient for you? Do you just want to go out and camp? Do you, and not worry about, you know, something being 50 miles away. Right. Um, it's all up to how you feel about it. Got it. And you got to remember there's, Coast to Coast is one organization. There's so many others out there to look at. So always do your research. Always look at, you know, is this going to be convenient? Is exactly. it what we need? Are we weekend warriors? Is it going to pay off for us? Are we full timers? Is it going to pay off for us? So those are things that you need to look at. And right. And if you are a full timer, some of these will actually be to your advantage. Exactly. Uh, the one thing I do want to bring up, I don't remember if that was part of what got cut off. We talked briefly about Thousand Trails. I think that got cut off. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about Thousand Trails is they have a program right now where you can test drive it. You can do mm -hmm. one year subscription and check out a region. Which is great. But and that, it is regional. So it would be, if you're on the West Coast, it would be for that area. If you're right. on, you know, Midwest, wherever you are, it would be for that area. But at least it gives you a really good idea of right. what they have to offer. And of course, their holy grail is they want to sell you a lifetime, <laughs> all the park, the whole system thing. Well, so, they all do. But so. before you pay into that, you might want to test drive it to see if it's going to work. Right. Uh, now, last but not least, money, cost. Um, depending where you go, they ask anywhere from four to $5,000 all the way up to ten dollars to $15,000. Some are twenty For a membership. Yeah, some, some are up are to 20000 for a membership. So once again, do the math. How long is it going to take for you with the type of camping you do? You should know how many days you're going to go every year. Mm -hmm. Is this going to pay for itself or are you going to be paying this off over decades? Mm -hmm. If it's decades, I don't know if I would do that. Somebody I really wouldn't do that. Yeah. So, so yeah, you got to make sure that it's something that is cost effective for you. And also mm -hmm. the maintenance fee we pay $200 a year maintenance right. fee, which if you look at $50 a night, that's only four nights, right? 50 times four is yep. 200 bucks. So that is, it's, it's it could be, it could be crazy. So you got to do your own mm -hmm. math. And, and last, 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 but not least, <laughs> uh, you can find used memberships online. Mm -hmm. I have a cousin that was actually looking and he found, I don't know if it was deluxe, premier or classic, but he found memberships as low as $2,000. But make Make sure if you do buy a membership, don't settle for anything less than premium. Exactly. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be paying extra once you get to these places. So, right. Or a lot extra. <laughs> right. We, we already pay extra, <laughs> but not a lot extra. So I think we're going to wrap that up here. So don't forget, hit that subscription button. And hit that bell that you know when we post, every hopefully, Sunday every Sunday at, at 2. two. 
Yeah, that you might find out what that hopefully means. In the, you know. <laughs> but anyways, uh, also thumbs up for good measure. And uh, we are going to get back to get all of our little side things up and running again. I'm going to get that um, over the next week or so. That should be coming up. And it's going to be a lot because I have so much to catch up on. Oh, but yeah. And I'm going to clean up the website, stuff, too. So, so. www.arrowdecamelot.com. That will be yeah. cleaned up, too. Time so. to do some purging and catching up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, until next time, see you on the road. Salancha. So